Hey friends, welcome to the 16th episode of the Sunday Knitting Society podcast. My name is Chelsea and I am a knitter in Oklahoma City. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I hope you guys had a really good two weeks. Um, mine were not great. <laughs> Thankfully it's the weekend now uh, and I get some time to relax, but it's been a really stressful two weeks. Um, and hopefully, hopefully getting better. Um, I went for a run this morning. I, I don't know if I talked about this a whole lot last time, but I decided like over two years ago that I was retiring from running. <laughs> um, I used to be a pretty consistent runner. I would never say I've been a good runner. I run for my mental health and I run cause I enjoy it. I don't run cause it looks good. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I was a pretty consistent runner for a lot of my life. And, um, then around I think 2019, 2020, really 2019, it seemed like every time I ran, I got hurt. Um, I was constantly having aches and pains and, um, I, I didn't enjoy running, but I was doing it because I knew that I used to like doing it. And finally, in the beginning of 2020, I was just like, forget it. You know what? Maybe you're just done. <laughs> Maybe you should look into other forms of exercise. Um, so I did. I took up spinning, like spin biking, not spinning yarn. Um, I took up spin. I did bar for a long time. I really liked them. Um, but running has always been like my first love. And... Um, uh, about a month ago, I started really getting the itch to run again. And so I've been doing a training plan through Nike Run Club. Um, and I've been trying to do everything I can to prevent injury. So I've been uh, stretching. I've been wearing good shoes. I'm running on a treadmill. Um, because a lot of my injuries happen when I run on ground. <laughs> um, and I've been taking like ibuprofen after runs, not all of them, but um, when I'm achy, I take some. Um, and then next week, I'm actually gonna see a physical therapist who specializes in running. Um, so hopefully I can keep myself healthy healthy, and running. Um, but I was telling a friend the other day, I was like, when I run in my head, I'm like an elite cross country runner. <laughs> like I look good and I'm like, I look, I don't know, I'm like fast and impressive and I'm running and then where I run, there's a mirror in front of the treadmills and every once in a while I'll look up and I'll be like, whoa, <laughs> that's not what's in my head. <laughs> I look terrible. I, I get, I have asthma, so I like, I flush super red. I still, you can see a little bit of it. Um, I get really red and I sweat and I'm like breathing heavy and it's it's not that elite runner in my head, but that's okay. Because the way I see it, I'm an elite runner. <laughs> um, I enjoy it. I do it because I get that runner's high. Um, I feel so good after a run um, that it is just, it's worth it for me. So um, every year Oklahoma City does the Memorial Marathon. I've run it twice in the past. I'm not running it this year, obviously. Um, but they do a 5k the day before. And so I think I'm going to do that and just kind of start there and then slowly work myself back up to a marathon. So we will see. But so that's been my morning so far. And then I went and got myself a coffee at the Harvey. Um, a friend of mine is the head baker there. And so I told him I was like, I need to get some bread. When's the best time to come get bread? And, uh, he was like, oh, just whenever you get done with your run, just come by and I'll have bread ready for you. And uh, he forgot, but that's okay because he just happened to have the bread I wanted already. So uh, he was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, enough rambling. I have a smattering of things. Oh yeah, actually I forgot to talk about this too. Um, thank you guys for all your sweet comments on the last podcast. Um, those were so fun to read through. You guys are truly some of the nicest humans ever. So thank you so much for your your kind comments, for your encouragement. Um, thank you for all the nice things you guys said about my mom. Um, 
I think she read some of the comments, but I was texting her what you guys said and now she thinks she's an influencer. <laughs> um, but she will definitely be back on. She's starting to work on a cabled hat. Um, and she's had some definite learning moments um, that she'll talk about. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get her back on. She lives out of, out of town, so um, we have to time it when she's in town. But she will definitely be back um, and showing, showing off all her, her new knits and learning and all that, that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Um, so yeah, so I have a, like a smattering of things. I've got an FO, I've got some hose, I've got some works in progress, I've got some spinning, I've got a little bit of acquisitions, and I've got some plans. So let's start with the F. Oh, actually, let's start with what I'm wearing. Sorry. One thing running does to me, it's always done this to me, is it makes my reflex worse. <laughs> I think it's as you're running, it's like sloshing all the acid in the stomach and it's just, so I burnt more, sorry. I will try to be discreet about that. Oh yeah, so what am I, I'm also very scattered today. Uh, so this is my Weekender Light. If you see my pants, I was not, I'm not matching, okay. Um, <laughs> the brightest blue workout pants. Uh, so yeah, so this is my Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, Weekender Light, sorry, I just... There's a cat in our neighborhood that likes to roam around and make my dogs angry. And she just walked past the window. Our dogs are outside, so they may start barking in a second. Anyway, Weekender Light by Andrew Mowry. I knit this in Wooly Mammoth Natural Sock. Yeah, Natural Sock. I think that's what it was. And this was one of her mustard colorways. Um, it's definitely... I feel like it's a little lighter than it was in the picture on my monitor. Uh, I still like it. It's still really comfy. I don't think I did any modification. Actually, no, I did. So I think on this one, so it's a bottom up sweater and it's a drop shoulder. So when you get to where you split for the armholes, you work it flat. And I think what I tried to do this time, because there are no short rows in this pattern. If there are, I forgot it. I don't think there are. Um, and I don't like things being really high on my neck. And so I actually knit the back panel longer. Um, so that I was hoping it would kind of, I don't know, <laughs> I don't, just kind of create a little bit of uh, elevated back. And I think it did okay on that. Um, I also, I think on her patterns, the neck ends up being quite long on me. Um, I don't mind a boat neck but I don't want to constantly have to be moving my bra strap. So um, this one, I actually, I think when I was doing the three needle bind off, I just went in a little bit more than it calls for. Um, and I really like it. I don't wear it a ton and I don't know why, because it's actually really comfortable and flattering. So anyway, so that's what I'm wearing. My, my single FO is the Saturday Shrug. So, few things about this pattern. I love my colors. So I use all of the solids are, um, I'm blanking, Kindred Red, DK, Held Double. I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to remember the colors. I think this is Paloma, this is Clementine. I don't remember what this one is. I think this one is Xenon, and this is Amalia's Dahlia's. I think I got that. And then this amazing swirl of awesomeness in here is Plush Packa Packa from Moondrake and it's her ultraviolet unicorn. And it, I love this. I actually wish I'd have added another stripe. I wish I'd gone in and done another one here. But I'll be honest, once I got through this row, I was starting to get tired of this. <laughs> so I kind of just wanted to be done. The other thing, so I did do her provisional tubular, or let me see if it'll focus, come on, there we go. So I did the provisional tubular cast on, and then I did a sewn, um, sewn cast off, bind off, sewn tubular. I've heard it called Italian, 
signed off as well. Um, so I like the, the thing, they do kind of ripple um, and that's partly because I've tried this on and it's supposed to go over your shoulders and um, it's kind of, it's a one size fits all, but like modify as you want. It's not hard to modify at all, but I didn't, it didn't even click in my brain that maybe I should modify it. So I have quite broad shoulders and I did it exactly to pattern and it fits over my shoulders. I'm not going to try to put it on because it's just, <laughs> maybe I should. Okay, I'm going to try. It's going to look weird. Um, so this is probably how actually I'm going to wear it. Just like, or like flipped over. Something like that where you can still see some of the colors. That's just a big cow. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try this. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't like it like this. I don't know why I thought I would. Well, it's really hard to get on one person. <laughs> uh, it's very bright. It's very colorful. Uh, I didn't make it long enough for it to actually work in this way. And I didn't make it wide enough, really. So I don't, this just makes me feel like I'm being trapped. Um, so I will probably wear it. Oh, I'll pack it in my face. Um, I'll probably wear it more like this or like that. And I like it. Um, it's, it's a little loose to be honest, to be used as a cowl, but I figure it, when I have a coat around it, it's going to squish it up and it'll be fine. Um, obviously it's not like when I say, obviously it's going to, it's supposed to get the eighties today here. Uh, so this is probably not going to get worn until next year, but it is, it's very heavy. It's very colorful. I love the colors. Um, I think I, the reason I was getting tired of it too is I think I realized about here that this is probably going to be too um, tight on me. And there was a part of me that thought, okay, should I just rip it out and cast on a wider or a higher number of stitches and start over with a more with a bigger circumference? But I'd already done the alpaca and I really did not feel like unwinding alpaca. And I was also just kind of like, I don't know. I was kind of ready to be done with this. And so I just thought, you know what? I'll wear it as a cow. It's great. It's fine. I'm not giving it away because I still love it. Like the colors are just fantastic. This combo, I absolutely love. Like I need a sweater. I was actually debating if I made a sweater and I made it striped, which color should be the, the main color, which color should be the stripe. Cause there's part of me that wants this to be the main color and then have like peach stripes, but that's going to be really bright. So I could do a peach with red stripes. I think this would look better on me as a main color. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good idea to hold this up to my face. It's like still flushed from my run. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would like a sweater in these colors. I think that would be great. I'm too warm to wear this. But, um, so I don't think there's anything else. <laughs> I have not blocked this yet. And so I haven't fully trimmed all my ends, but who cares? Wow, that's a lot of alpaca in my face. Whew. Um, I will probably make another one of these at some point. I think I would probably make it actually in a single color, maybe like a navy, and make it much bigger um, so that it's, I'm not having to fight with it. What I might actually do if I do it again is use a bigger needle for the part that's going to go over my shoulders and then a smaller needle as it gets up closer to my neck. That way I'm not like, it's not flopping around <laughs> up by my neck, but it actually kind of cinches in just a little bit. Um, so that's the, the Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose. It was fun. Um, this week was stressful. And so, and I didn't have a lot of time in the afternoon or evenings when I got home. Like, I think last week I had something early in the morning, four out of five days that I was working. And then I had something in the evening, three out of the five days. And several, or like a few days had something in the morning, like at 6 a.m. and at 6 p.m. So it was just like, 
all of my like sit and knit time got taken up by other things. And so when I was home and I had time, I was so tired. I was like, I just need comfort knitting. And so this fit the bill because it's one by one rib. Like that's it. Um, I didn't have to think, all I had to do was count my rows. So I did, I used 50 gram skeins and I found that one 50 gram skein got me 15 rows um, at my gauge. So yeah, that's the side of the shrug. Okay, now I have, sorry, the light is like getting all moody and, and nice. Um, yeah, they said we were supposed to have like sunshine and 80s today, but like, it's cloudy. It looks like it's gonna rain. I was looking at my weather app. Oh good, it's gonna be windy. <laughs> if if you've never been to Oklahoma, we get outrageous wind. Like 20 mile an hour wind is normal here. It's normal. Um my house I know has withstood 80 mile an hour winds. Um you just kind of have to batten down the hatches and like ride it out. Um, so when it says windy in Oklahoma, you're probably looking at 30 mile an hour gusts. Uh, I remember in college one time it was so windy, you could actually lean into it and not fall over. <laughs> so uh, you gotta be careful wearing skirts in Oklahoma. Anyway, I digress. Um, okay, so I have a hoe. This is the first sock I made with my crazy zobra ball. Um, I have not started the second sock yet and I will talk about that in a second. Um, I also have not woven in this end yet because I thought it was gonna be too tight. Um, the other thing that was really interesting about this is this yarn is fairly thin when you're knitting with it. And so these socks just didn't feel dense enough, which I don't, I'm not real hard wearing on my socks. I've never worn a hole in any of my socks. I don't wear them a ton, um, but um, so I wasn't too worried about like wearing these out, um, but I was wondering if they would like stay, if they would have enough like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I thought they might like stretch out too much if they were too light of a fabric. Um, and again, I felt like this was too tight. Um, and so I was kind of worried that when I tried to pull it up my, my very large calf. Thank you, dad. Um, that it wasn't going to go all the way up my calf. Um, but so I blocked it and I don't know if you can look how cool that is. I just, these color transitions are so fun, but it also filled out a lot. So I don't know if this, I don't know if you'll all be able to see this at all, but yeah, so it's like a much more dense fabric. You can't really see my, you can a little bit, you can't see my finger through there a whole lot. Um, so it definitely fluffed up when I washed it and this actually stretched out really good. So that was my first one. Um, and I just do, I don't like fancy socks. I like vanilla socks. That's my happy place. Um, I'm trying to think if I do anything fun. I also don't like doing slip slip knit as decreases. I just feel like they always look very obvious. So I do knit two together, regardless of what side I'm on. Um, I just think like, like, come on, focus. So there's one very hard to see. Uh, and then there's the other one very, very hard to see. So, um, I don't know. That's how I like doing it. But first, first sock. I will finish the second one, but I needed the needles <laughs> to work on the sock for my pastor that he does not know he's getting yet. Um, so I think I mentioned this, I think I actually mentioned it with my mom. So, um, I knit in church and it, I do it because I have enough ADHD in me that, um, I, I need to keep my hands busy in order to pay attention. So, I bring little projects to church like socks or hats um, and work on them. But um, one of our pastors obviously doesn't have any knitters in his life or much experience with knitting because he's made a couple comments about knitting that are not the most favorable. 
And I don't think he means to be offensive. I think he's just ignorant of knitting. Um, but he made a comment about like just sitting at home at knitting in a not great light. And everyone around me in the service was like, <laughs> so what I've decided to do is knit him a pair of socks and then present them to him and be like, let's work on your perception of knitting. Also, you can wear these on Sunday if you want. Um, so I got some yarn from Nomadic, Nomadic Fibers, Nomadic Yarns. She does these amazing self-striping, self-striping sock yarns. Look at it. This color is called Snow Day, but honestly, I feel like this kind of looks like stained glass, which was not entirely intentional. <laughs> so I have, I think I knit like all of this in two days. And then I've just been like working on the, the foot. Um, part of the problem is I don't know his shoe size. And so I've been asking friends like, hey, can you figure out the faster shoe size? Like in a sneaky way, because it would just look weird if I was like, hey, by the way, what's your shoe size? <laughs> like kind of a weird question and it might give me away. So um, I'm having other friends ask. Um, if we can't figure it out, I'll probably knit like a 10-ish, 10 and a half men's size. Um, I have this Nifty Difty sock ruler from Katrinkles. I just dropped that. Okay. So it actually has like um, US, US women's sizes, US men's sizes, and then just a ruler. So I can kind of, you basically, if you've never seen one of these before, you stick it in the heel of the sock so you kind of give it a little stretch and then you can see where you are and so I like to knit my socks with about half an inch of negative ease so whatever so if I'm going for a 10 that's like a 10 and a half on the ruler so I want to shoot for 10 inches and then I usually give myself like a little under two inches for the toe decreases and so I would go back from there and then so I think I have got where am I yeah, I've got like another half inch of knitting before I start doing the toe. So I've kind of been pausing on this just to like wait and see if somebody can get some recon for me. Um, but what I might also do is, mm, the needle just like stabbed me. <laughs> uh, I may just wind off a few extra rows and cut it and just like hold, like put this on scrap yarn and then start the second sock. Um, and that way I can, you know, if it turns out he's got like a size 13 foot, then I have some extra and I can make him longer. Um, this yarn did not come with a mini skein. So I actually dug through my substantial stash of mini skeins and found this. I think this was actually from my Farmer's Daughter Fiber Advent, but um, it's a little thicker, but I'm using it for like high wear areas, but I think it like matches perfectly with that other like turquoisey teal. Come on, focus. So I'm happy with this. Um, I did a 72 inch, 72 inch, 72 stitch sock. Um, I'm on a one and a half US, which is kind of my happy place for sock needles. But um, I'm gonna try to get these done in the next week or two. It's actually enjoyable knitting. Um, and I have been working on it in church. <laughs> um, so I actually did my whole heel turn in church and I was getting a little bit nervous because I realized I forgot to bring scissors. And I don't think this yarn, I don't think I could pull it and like break it. And so I was just like knitting really slow. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna be in trouble if I can't. Um, well, not in trouble. I'm just gonna have to stop knitting if I get to the end of the heel and then I don't have um, scissors uh, or I can't break my yarn. So, um, so that's my second almost hoe. It's an almost hoe. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got one more whip. So I have been studiously avoiding Sleep Island. Um, I think, I don't know why. I don't actually mind sleeves that much. Um, 
I kind of get in a rhythm with them and it's fine. But something in my brain just did not want to have to think about, like I didn't want to have to go get a new needle. I didn't want to have to think about it. I didn't want to have to go back to my pattern and figure out what size I was knitting so I knew how many stitches to pick up, how you know frequently to decrease. I just didn't feel like it. Um, but at some point, when I started getting tired of the Saturday shrug, I was like, I should probably do a sleeve. And so I pulled out my Louvre sweater. Oh gosh, I love this color. Um, and I put myself on Sleeve Island. Um, so I'm done with the decreases on this sleeve. I'm at about 10 inches on the sleeve and it's a pretty deep raglan. Um, so this sleeve is not going to be as long as my normal. I think I normally like an 18 inch sleeve, like, but this is a drop shoulder. So this is different too. Um, but since this is a deep raglan, I'm probably not going to go as long on my, my sleeve. Um, but I tried it on last night when I finished the decreases and, um, it, it's still about six inches from where I want it to be. Now in the pattern, she wants you to do five inches, I think five and a half inches of ribbing on the sleeves. I'm not going to lie. When I first read that, my immediate thought was no, <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not doing that much ribbing. Um, but then I started thinking about it. And I was like, that would actually be pretty cool. It would look good. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do another inch of sleeve knitting. And then I'm going to change to my smaller needles and do a lot of ribbing. Um, I think because of past experience, I think I'm actually, before I bind off, I'm going to just put it on uh, like a barber cord do the other sleeve, put it on a barber cord and then block it. And then I can kind of make sure that I like the length before I bind off. And if I don't like it, I can either take some away or add some without having to like do a lot of surgery on my sleeve. Because the red Monday sweater that I tried to do sleeve surgery on is still sitting in the basket untouched. Um, so I'm kind of trying to build some insurance against myself um, by just putting this on a uh, barber cord and blocking it and seeing how much it grows. But I love this thing. It's so nice. Um, I am not sure about this neckline yet. I think I talked about this before. Um, when I put it on, I like the look of the turtleneck or the mock neck or the whatever, but I also know myself and I don't think I'm going to be able to handle that. Now I'm going to try to block the heck out of it and make it more of like a floppy neckline, <laughs> but uh, I have a feeling that I'm not going to like that. So I may have to take out this, this collar and that's okay. I, I may try doing like a folded collar and just see how I like that. And if I don't, then I may just like, um, unravel until I get to like an inch on the collar and then bind off. So we'll see. Um, hopefully I won't have to do anything to it. Hopefully I'll just like it because that's more work. Um, <laughs> so I'm using Sonder Yarn Sunday Morning DK in the Over Easy colorway. It's one of the Ecru base. I love it so much. I love it so much. It, um, so what it reminds me of may take some explaining. <laughs> I seem a little weird. Um, my mom and I both absolutely love, well, I don't know if she absolutely loves, but I absolutely love the movie Foul Play with Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn. And I heard somewhere, I don't know if this is true, so don't quote me on this, but I heard that she had it, Goldie Hawn had in her contract with that movie that every shot that she was in had to have this color in it, like a, a daisy yellow. Um, and if you watch the movie, every time you see her, she's either wearing this color, her umbrella's this color, or there's flowers in the background, or their paint colors this color. Um, and it, it looks good on her, but it just, this feels like my Goldie Hawn color. <laughs> 
So maybe I'll have to name this my Goldie Hawn sweater. Um, but yeah, so that's my loose sweater. Hopefully, gosh, I'm not going to give myself any deadlines. I was going to say, hopefully I'll have this finished in a week. Uh, I'm going to have it finished when it's finished. Um, because my, my life is just busy right now and that's okay. Um, I'm also like, you know, spending my Saturday mornings running. And then I'm also, I'm gardening more. I have a huge garden in my backyard. I think I told you guys this last time. Um, once it gets more lush and it doesn't just look dead, <laughs> I may actually record a podcast out there. Um, I think that could be nice. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I started all my seeds. Well, not all. I started seeds for like tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplants, and some herbs. I'm growing like nine different versions of basil. I actually learned a recipe last year for basil tea and it's so good. Um, I'll see if I can find it and actually like put it in the, the description box or in the show notes. Um, it's really easy to do, but you need fresh basil and honey. Um, and it, it, it like picks up the different flavors of the different basils. Um, so I'm trying to do some different ones this year so I can like get a, uh, you yeah, know, some variety in my basil tea. Basil is also just really good for the garden. It's a good companion plant. Um, so, and it smells good. I'm a big proponent for having like tactile and, what the other word is, smelly <laughs> gardens, like interactive gardens. Like I don't just want to look at something and think it's pretty. I want to like run my hands through it and smell it. Um, and so, yeah, I grow lots of things that smell really good. I grow, I don't know if you guys have ever tried this or if you can grow it in your area, but lemon verbena smells like a dang margarita. It is so good. I always have it in my garden because it's just like, ah, oh, it just smells like vacation. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So that is it for the knitting. Um, the next thing I have is spinning. So I have a e-spinner. I have the electric eel wheel six or EEW six. Um, I never have seen myself using the like sleeping beauty, um, traditional spinning wheel. To be honest, it does not make sense in my brain. I don't think I've ever seen one in person too. That That's probably part of it. Um, so like it just did not make sense conceptually for me. And when I was researching different types of wheels too, I was also like, I'm not going to spend a lot of money on a hobby that I don't even know if I'm going to like. So um, I found the EEW6 it's like around $300. So compared to like thousands of dollars or even like 500 bucks for a, a beginner spinning wheel, um, this is a lot cheaper. Uh, it's still expensive. It's still money. Um, but it also just conceptually made sense to me. Um, and it's also small, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. So it wasn't a huge commitment for me. And I started doing it around this time last year, actually. I think I knit my first, right? I um, did my first spin and actually knit a hat out of it. Um, I need to find it actually. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it and I did it pretty consistently for a couple months. And then I kind of got tired of it. I was doing other things and I kind of forgot about it, honestly. And until about, January I think I started getting it out again and then I had a couple days off last month and I spent so much time spinning uh, to the point that like my hand was cramping but I got some yarn out of it and um, I'm pretty proud of this yarn so I'm not good at doing the whole twist it into a skein thing so don't judge my skeins um, but this is my my first yarn I've made in a while I think this was a nest club colorway. I don't remember what the color was. I don't remember what the fiber content was because I am terrible at keeping notes. Um, I actually, so this is a two ply. 
I think you would call this a fractal spin. I I divided the the fiber in half lengthwise and then I just end to end spun both of the plies and then I twisted them together in a two ply. Um, so my goal with this spin was really to work on making a more consistently thin ply um, because all the the yarn that I've spun up actually I think I have some I'll grab it so this was the last ooh, literally just almost fell into my bookcase um this was the last yarn I made I have not knit anything with it but it's a like a pretty solid worsted weight um I think it's beautiful I just haven't found the right thing to do with it but I really wanted to work on making my my to get a lighter weight of yarn because ultimately I would really like to spin up sock yarn but to be able to do that I probably need at least a three ply which means my plies have to be like thread <laughs> they have to be so little so um oh, I just love these colors I also love that this like you can kind of see it there's like whole sections that are just blue and whole sections that are orange and then I've got some that are kind of like mixed in here um but this now I've washed it and so it kind of plumped up a little bit but I so I use a nitty knotty and my nitty knotty is 60 inches around and so I count how many strands I have and then do math and figure out how many yards I have so according to the nitty knotty I've got 370 yards of this and it's a little over a hundred grams. So I'm pretty proud of that. I think that's more like, it's bordering fingering weight, but it's not quite, it's like sport weight to fingering weight. Um, so I don't have any plans for this yarn right now. It's not really, I don't wanna make a hat out of it. Um, but what I really, I think I wanna do with this is use it for color work on a sweater. So if like the yoke has some pretty color work because this is gonna have long changes in it um, almost like spin cycle, which is pretty cool. Um, so it, I may use it on, on something that I want there to be like some interest in the color work, um, without having to change colors. So, or change yarn, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. And then I finished a quarter of my nest fiber Valentine's day advent. Or, or calendar countdown whatever it's like a mega bobbin um as I was like putting this on here I was like oh it's gonna make a lot <laughs> but um so basically I talked about this before but I split all 14 of my advent days into quarters and put them here I got one I'll just show you um I like wound them up into these little little bumps and so every and I put them in bags and so I had four bags full of fiber and each one has a quarter of the yarn or of the fiber so the goal is to make two ply and I think I got them pretty dang thin I'm just gonna show you again because I'm proud um you can kind of see all the color variation on that oh that's so cool that is really cool actually I like that. Um, I will say I wasn't in, I wasn't impressed with the colors when I pulled them out of the advent. Like when I opened them, I was like, oh, that's weird. I was expecting like pinks and reds and whatnot. Um, but as I started spinning them, I was just like, these are so cool. Like I really, I really love these colors. I don't think this outside is the best representation, but there's some really fun colors in here. And I'm not trying to do everything in the same order on this one. I randomly picked fiber out of the bag. That's how I'm gonna do the other three bobbins. I'm probably gonna start them today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so eventually I'll have four of these. I'm gonna label them one through four and then I think I'm gonna mix them. So like either do like one and four together and two and three or like one and three and two and four. Uh, what I've heard, so like the more you spin, the better you get and so I'm expecting my fourth bobbin to be my best 
because it's going to be like the most consistent, maybe the thinnest. And so if I'm consistently getting better as I go and I apply together one and two and three and four, they're not going to be the same yarns. And so that's why I'm thinking of staggering them so that they're more, the skeins are more similar. I think I'll probably get four skeins out of this, which is pretty cool. Um, no idea what I'm going to make with it, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. I'm just proud of it. So anyway, so that is all my spinning. Um, I have a little bit of acquisitions. I'm trying to remember, did I bring all my acquisitions? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't buy much. Uh, I did buy some. Um, I might, I have a few things that I might purchase in the future, but probably not this month. I'll probably do it, wait until it, to next month. We'll see. I'm just trying to, to be good about my budgeting. Oh yeah. So, uh, just a little update on that. On track. I've made two payments out of 12. I've got 10 left. It's going good. We'll see. This month is a little, I had some more expenses this month. I had to take my dogs to the vet. Oh gosh, they were fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was expensive. And then, um, had a few extra things crop up this month that just made it a little bit more expensive. So, um, trying to rein in the budget a little bit. So probably no more yarns purchases this month. Um, but I saw that Knitting for Olive last month was doing a, um, not a sale because their yarn wasn't on sale, but all the proceeds from the sales of, I think a, like a two or three day period were going to a fund or a, a charity that helped in Ukraine. I think it was like on the anniversary of um, the beginning of the Ukraine-Russia war. Um, and so I really wanted to support that. I also, there are a couple different things from Ding for Olive that I wanted to try. So I bought a couple or a few things. Um, the first thing I got was a color that I love and I really hope it shows up on camera. So it's called, it's Dusty Sea, oh, that's it. Yeah. It's Dusty Sea Green. And <laughs> I got it in the Merino Sea, or Fingering and the Mohair. And this is going to be a hat. Oh, this, oh, it smells good. Oh, it smells good. Um, so I, <laughs> when I first got this and I looked at the label, I was like, Dirty Sea Green. That's a weird name. And then I looked at it again. And I was like, dusty, dusty sea green, different than dirty sea green. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, I love this color. It's maybe a little bit darker than it's showing. It's not quite that pastel. Yeah, it's, it's darker than that, but that's still close enough. Um, I have a few hats that I've made with this combo. I actually typically knit the Parkview hat by Tracy Miller with this. It works really well with this combo. Um, and then put a crazy pom-pom on top, but I just felt like I haven't made myself a hat since last year. Is that right? Yeah, it's been a while since I made my, I don't, I mean, we're getting into like warm weather, so I'm not going to need a hat, but it's good to have them. Um, the other thing I got was some of the pure silk and I got it in the coal colorway. So it's just black. Um, so I got three balls of this. Um, it is, how much is it? It's 250 meters. So I've got 750 meters. Um, so which I figure is probably plenty to do like a tank top or something. Now, you know, with all the summer knitting starting to crop up, um, I wanted to kind of get a few things to, to make for some summer knits. So I'm looking for a pattern. I think there's a Kadri pattern. I think it's the home camisole is what it's called. Uh, I'll have to double check, but um, I think I want to make that. And I was trying to think through colors and I was like, you don't want to knit a black camisole. That sounds annoying. It just sounds tedious to knit a black camisole. But then I started thinking about it more and I was like, if I was going to go to a store and buy a black tank top or buy a tank top, I'd get it in black. 
So that's the color I'm knitting it in uh, eventually when I get to it. But that is it. Um, yeah. So um, one thing I'm, I'm kind of thinking about doing is, um, so there's a pattern that just came out by Rebecca Clow of um, the Crepe and Knitting Podcast called the Lanark Sweater. Uh, and I'm going to be honest when I, I watch her podcast, I love her podcast. Um, but when she was describing it, I was just in my head going, nah, nah, I'm not doing half fisherman's rib. <laughs> like, mm, that, that sounds like a lot of work. That doesn't sound fun. I don't want to do that. Um, and I thought about doing the petite knit zipper sweater because it's basically a, it's a similar silhouette, but it's just stockinette. So I was like, maybe I'll do that one instead. But then I really like the Lanark sweater. Like, I love the big collar. I love the zipper. I love that you can make it more fitted or you can make it oversized. I would want it oversized. It just seems like it would be such a cozy sweater and just look cool at the same time. I also would kind of like to learn how to sew in a, a zipper to a sweater. So I am thinking about making that um we will see so I kind of went through my yarn that I already have and um let's see yeah so um I think it's like a the DK yeah it's a DK gauge so I have some of this this is Earl Grey fiber she's not dying anymore um but I have a decent amount of this so I could use it, but I don't really want, let me pull one out and I'll show you. So, um, pretty sure it's the, yeah, it's, um, the color is sweater weather, which is kind of funny, but it's like this purple, but like, but it's like speckled, variegated. And I don't really want that for the, that's not what I see the Lanark in. I see the Lanark in like navy or charcoal. Um, and I had some charcoal. <laughs> so this is from Tana's Fiber Arts. It's her Pure, pure Wash DK. And it's really pretty. Um, I think I have seven skeins of this, but I don't have enough. Because I want it to be a little, I want the lantern to be a little boxy. Um, and I need it, I need a, like 2,000 yards of DK. Like a little over 2,000. And I've got like 1,600 of this. Um, and... I could probably buy more, but I would be worried about the colors, like there being um, different dye lots. So then I know one of the, like some of her testers did it in whole super soft, um, held double. And I happen to have a couple cones. So I've got this one. This is the Navy Heather. Oh, come on, there you go. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, and this is like my ideal color. For the Lanark. I think this color just looks really good with my complexion. Um, I like working with this yarn. I think um, it would be a good experience. But this is a 500 gram cone and it's got about 3,100 yards on it. If I were to hold double, I would need about 4,000. <laughs> so I am short a thousand ish yards. So I think realistically, if I was going to make this, I would probably buy a second cone in this color. Um, I could just buy single little balls of it, um, but then I would have ends to weave in and that is annoying. <laughs> so um, I looked it up. There's a place, I, I think the Yarnery has one more in this color. I can also order it from Holst. Um, and I think there's another place in the US that sells it. Uh, in a cone. So, um, I'm debating doing that. I think I will probably wait till next month to buy that just because again, trying to watch my budget. Um, and I'll have a little bit extra next month. So I may buy a second cone of this and then maybe this will be like my summer project to do the Lanark sweater and then have it ready for the fall. Um, so I don't, I can't go to Rhinebeck this year, Sad, which is probably for the, for my 
wallet's best interest um, <laughs> for, the, for the, the health of my budgets. So I'm not going to write back. Um, but I actually, so the big work conference I go to every fall uh, is the same week as right back, so which is why I can't go. But it's in Milan. And um, I think I'm going to do like a week of vacation after the conference and just go all over Italy. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going yet. So if you guys have any suggestions. I've been, I've taken two trips to Italy. I love Italy. They have the best food of any place I've ever been. Um, and I've been, been through, I haven't been everywhere, obviously. I've been to a lot of places in Italy and I love it. Um, funny, funny little side note, uh, or side story. So I, the first time I went to Italy, I was in residency and I got a super cheap ticket on the week I had off. And so I was pumped, but nobody else could go with me. So I went by myself, but I, um, I booked the ticket like three months in advance. And so I spent the next three months trying to learn Italian and I can't speak Italian. <laughs> I learned enough to be like polite and like understand some signage, but I could not, I can't speak Italian. Um, but since then I've been learning French. Um, I've been doing like three and a half years of French lessons. Um, still, every time someone tries to speak to me in French, I panic and I can't remember anything great but I can read it pretty well um and I can speak it pretty well when I'm not under pressure <laughs> um but I also grew up learning Spanish and so I understand Spanish fairly well um I don't speak it very well but so when I'm when I'm overseas in a country that their primary language is not English and somebody speaks to me in whatever language it is if I'm prepared for it, I can try to respond in that language if I know it. Um, but more often what happens is people catch me off guard, I panic, and I try to respond in Italian. <laughs> like, I think I, actually in Berlin, I did that. Somebody, um, so I was by myself, I wasn't talking. And so people don't know what language you speak if they don't hear you speaking. And so they were, they started talking to me in German and I just, I don't speak German. And they started speaking to me in French and I panicked and they started speaking to me in Spanish. And I just, <laughs> just panicked and went, grazie. <laughs> and then they looked at me and finally I was like, I'm American, <laughs> I speak English. Um, so that was fun. But yeah, I, I panic and I, I speak the very little Italian I know, um, which will, you know, work out fine if I go to, when I go to Italy, but um, it doesn't work out so good in other countries. <laughs> Hopefully someday I'll get to the point that I can actually like speak in French. That would be great. And I'm actually, I started doing a little bit of Spanish again as well. Um, just be, I actually started doing Vietnamese. I got it in my head I was going to learn Vietnamese. Um, I use an app called Duolingo and I really like it. Um, and my nail lady is Vietnamese and I think her language is absolutely beautiful. I love listening to, I can't understand a word they're saying, uh, but I don't care. I, I just like listening. And one day I got it in my head. I was like, I'm gonna learn Vietnamese. I'm gonna talk with Kayla. It's gonna be great. Um, mm -mm. That's a hard language. <laughs> I did it for a few weeks and then I was just like, this, I'm trying so hard to remember the word for girl. <laughs> I can't even remember how to say girl. And then I was like, there was one accent that separated girl from another word that was completely unrelated. And that was the point where I was like, this is not the best use of my time. Like I would be much better served if I tried to learn some Spanish. So trying to learn, trying to brush up my Spanish a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was not on topic at all. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where I got that. Oh, not going to Rhinebeck, going to Italy. In the fall. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> like, how did my brain get to this topic? Um, but yeah, so I'd have my Lanark done in the fall. That's, that's where I was coming from. Um, but yeah, so I might, Try to have that lantern sweater done by the fall so I can wear it then. 
<laughs> um, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm gonna do some errands and um, clean my house. That's one thing that I've noticed when I get really stressed uh, in life in general, my house gets so messy. So it's just, it just needs tidy. There's just stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna try to like motivate myself um, to just do do 30 minutes at a time and just blitz my house and try to get it looking like a crazy person doesn't live here. <laughs> but um, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys back. I, I'm probably not going to be able to be back in two weeks. Um, I have a really quick work trip uh, two weeks from now and it's going to be like all day Saturday, which is usually when I record. Um, but I'm also leaving early on Friday, so I won't be able to do it Friday. Um, so we'll see if I get off early enough, I may record on Thursday and post on, on Saturday, but it may be a week late. Um, so if that's the case, I'll make sure I update you guys on Instagram just so you know what to expect. Um, but otherwise I hope you guys have a good couple weeks. I hope you get lots of time for knitting. I hope you get some good weather. Um, we're definitely, we're getting into prettier weather here. It's more enjoyable to be outside now, which is great. Um, so I hope you guys can get some outside time, some knitting time, some relaxing time. Um, and I will see you guys back in two-ish weeks. <laughs> see ya.